Um, because they're playing such outside the you know wheelhouse, you know it's really hard to just pinpoint who's got the advantage here. Mm -hmm. I think they're both, like you said, they're both successful players. They've both been on the you know the round robin stages before. Yeah. They're they're good competitors, so it's going to come down to good play. Yeah, I'm very excited to watch this poor craft game and see if that's what uh, Praetorian kicks off with. So we're jumping into it now, and it is yes. There it is. All right. There's Here a lot to talk about with Portalcraft, and the turns can be very, very extended, but big things to remember is how many artifacts in hand is Deus Ex active and is Residence able to be controlled? That's right. And for those of you who are newer, who don't know what Portalcraft does or what basically anything in the deck is mm. because you're new to Shadowverse or new to the cast at all, is Resonance is when you have an even number of cards in your deck. Mm -hmm. So basically you get benefits if you have an even number of cards in your deck. Deus Ex has Resonance. There are a few other cards that have resonance in the deck, like Dimension Cut, that you mm -hmm. get just extra value out of. And then, of course, how many artifacts have been generated? Yeah. What can you pull with the cards that say, take an artifact from your deck and put it into your hand? And how do you utilize them best to work around the resonance effect and maintain board control? Yeah. Now, we have to make sure to pay attention to the side of Meow's board here as well. Uh, with the early turns, having the Magic Illusionist, and the Witch's Cauldron, he's really going to be looking to draw this. Okay, this is already a, a not good look. You want your Acceleradiums to be spread out as much as you can. Yep. There is opportunity to make big plays off early Acceleradiums, but there's not a lot of artifact generators here. He has he has a few now, and actually it's very draw. important that you save the Icarus to the point where I think your play is the Hamlin the Icarus. I, I would I would have to agree with the Hamlin the Icarus. The only other thought is because you are playing an aggressive burn-oriented deck, you might want to get as many wards out as possible mm. just to gum up the early game so that you don't take any so damage. you can double up on the Iron Staff as well. Yeah, you can do that. Um, either one I think is fine, but you're right. The Acceleradiums you don't really want to have in your opening hand. Yes. Those are kind of like Deuce Ex Machina activation okay. cards. He does go with a safe play. Now, the big thing about this, and I like this method as well, is because Icarus on its Evolve effect will actually tutor out an artifact, so you can mm -hmm. guarantee you hold one of those. Plus Acceleradiums, that actually becomes very play point positive things that you're doing. Right. Yep. So Accel Acceleradium, outside of just giving rush to whatever artifact you play, you can cover one play point after you play it, so you actually get to get ahead. Mm -hmm. Now, here's one thing I want to say about Meow. When you are dedicated in your craft yes. to playing Abomination Awakened, yeah. You always have it on turn three. That's it's just what it is. And look at that. He's got Witch's Cauldron and Concentration. That is a way to gain cards in hand. <laughs> Man. Yes, it is. On turn four, you play both of them. You can even just evolve the Abomination. Now, there is a ward in the way, and this is exactly why Iron Staff was Hamlin. Hamlin yep. creates a copy and puts it directly into your hand. Hamlin's very, very one nice. of those cool effects that I really like that they gave to Portal Craft. It's just, it's a 2-1. You can copy an artifact that you've pulled out, like mm -hmm. a 3-1 with Rush or a 2-1, you know, Last Words Draw yeah. card. You can you can copy pretty much anything oh you want to an artifact generator. Yeah. Whatever. Th th things aren't looking great. Drew into the Saphira as well. And this is all stuff that is probably going to get thrown away at some point in the game, if the game gets going, right? Um, and I think if there's any turn here, you can do some combination of Acceleradiums plus Icarus. Now you shouldn't be too scared of throwing out cards yeah. at this point just because you, you need something to play until you get into your Deus, Deus Ex. Now here's here's the one thing that you can consider also playing Portal Craft. So like if you manage what you're actually putting into your deck, right now there's only Mystic Artifacts. What that means yeah. is that there's only Artifacts in the deck that will okay. draw you more cards. Very similarly now with, with the uh, Analyzing, but now he's put in basically the whole yes. gamut of things that he can do. So Yeah, and this will allow him to run over the Abomination, which I think is a smart move. You, you need to make sure you control this, this damage. Any early damage that is done to you as Portal Craft is very hard to come back from. Yep. There are no, there are no heal cards. I mean, there, yeah. there are technically cards you can play that heal you in the class, but they're not very good. There's a 4-play yes. point 4-3 four, that heals two, mm -hmm. but that's about it. And that's why I think Happy Pig is in the deck, mm -hmm. but... This is a very good kind of situation for Meow, I feel. Like, he's, he has a lot of cards. He has a lot of options. He's going up in the play points. And you still have to think about things like Grand Summoning, right? You have to think about things like the Mutagenic Bolts. Yeah, Grand Summoning is a big deal in pretty much every matchup. Um, except, I mean, maybe in Dragon in some cases because they do have Bahamut. But outside of that, it's just it's a really good card. So this is interesting. You're going to be on five play points. Your Acceleradium is going to let you 
if you play both of them, it's going to let you play Mystic Artifacts or the Analyzing yeah, Artifacts for a profit of one. is just so good here. You get yeah. to clear the board with it. So Spinaria is interesting because if you had played the Accelerator on turn four, you could actually no, swing in with your Spinaria here on the ar on the artifact. It would have gained Rush, and it would have drew, drew you another artifact. And that's actually really important, getting these artifacts out of your deck, because it guarantees it helps guarantee you draw more of your core cards. Absolutely. Which at this point is a goal because you need the Deus Ex very, very soon. Yeah, this is interesting. So playing the Abomination just because it is probably his best option to evolve over the Spinaria this turn. Oh, okay, never mind. He wants as much Earthright as he can find. That's right, he, he activates the uh, the Abomination this turn yeah. in this way instead. Much better. Ooh, he leaves the Spinaria at one. Yeah, and I would assume you swing your Alchemist in. Oh, he actually drew in? the Deus Ex. That's so big, that's so big that I actually And Resonance that. is going to be active. Now yeah. the question is, is, is does he want to throw away two Acceleradiums to play the Deus Ex? It's tough. I think that there is a world where you double Acceleradium, play out some of your artifacts to control the board, and, and just look to do that on the next turn. Mm -hmm. Just because Acceleradium has a lasting effect, right? That's really one of the big reasons why you would not toss a hand right now, is because you can take uh, action with those active effects. Yep. Interesting I, that he didn't play the I second one. I would just play the second one. I don't see why not. You would have recovered two play points and actually been able to play the do sex in the same turn as well, right? Mm -hmm. No, because you'd still uh, one you would profit on. one play point, so yeah. you would be at five of six. That's right. That's right. You would be at five of six. Um, I maybe the consideration is board space that also has to be respected. Mm -hmm. But the big thing for Deus Ex is it provides the effect of gaining one. Pl oh no, 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 no! <laughs> you gain the effect of playing one play point, or gaining one play point every time you play an artifact. On top of your Acceleradiums, you start gaining three play points for every artifact that you play if you have two Acceleradiums down. Yep. Starts to feel really, really good. Now, the reason you saw him do exactly what he did this turn is because he's trying to get as many cards out of his hand as he can, basically get as much advantage as he can out of those cards, setting up an Acceleradium while also activating Resonance next turn so that he can pop off his Deuce X. So Deuce X, if you guys aren't familiar, is a card that when it comes down, it gives you a lasting effect that at the end of every single turn, if Resonance is active for you, you get to discard your hand, draw six new cards. Yeah. And so the way that this is happening, he can actually Deus Ex, play out a bunch of one play point artifacts, and then end the turn with Acceleradium, just mm -hmm. because he's profiting play points every time he plays artifacts now. That's right. Artifacts at least that cost one or less. We're going to start to see some crazy business next turn, because yeah. like Acceleradium, Deus Ex also gives you the added benefit of whenever you play an artifact, you recover a play point. So you double that up with Acceleradiums, you start yeah. going crazy. Yeah. And this is the big thing here, right? Normally, this would be tough because you have no evolution orbs, but you still, because you have at least that one play point available, you can play your uh, Deus Ex, play your Analyzing, or your uh, Ancient, actually, he has in hand, mm -hmm. and that'll gain you one more play point, so it'll be at two, and that lets you play something like the Magisteel. Right. Yeah, Magisteel or Happy Pig or whatever else you want to put in play here. He plays the Fury just to control. Okay. Really you need to, you need to watch your, your cards in hand uh, oh, because up. when you activate that Deus Ex, like on the next turn, Resonance is going to turn off. Yep. So you need to figure out, like, okay. He can still do it with the Analyzing. Or no, he doesn't have the Analyzing. Or, um, I'm sorry. He, he has the Ancient, not the Analyzing. Mm -hmm. So that will not affect Resonance. Yeah. The only thing that does, he doesn't have very much, so. Fear is the first step of worship. Oh, is he going to activate two in the same game? Yeah, he's he's really getting a lot of value off of this. This is crazy. Gosh, that's so good in the late game, especially in, in this slow-paced game right mm -hmm. now. And Praetorian hasn't really activated the, the engine that Portalcraft lives off of. It's true. I mean, he, he still can't this turn. See, this is the problem. Every turn you take mm -hmm. off from doing the combo. Yeah. I think Praetorian kind of backed himself into a corner by kind of delaying the the uh, the Deus Ex turn mm -hmm. because now he drew into too many options that he doesn't want to throw away. Let's see. Neither human nor okay, he's second going Sephira down. Clear. Yep. I think at this turn point, play the Accelerator. He looks like he's just delaying the Acceleradium for maximum turns yeah. with it available. Yeah. Which I think is definitely a way to approach it. 
Essentially, he's just doing what you said at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. you, you cannot really recover if you take too much damage in the early game before you start going off. Because what this deck does best is that when it does start going off, it mm -hmm. keeps the board clean every single turn. So yeah. as long as it's at a healthy enough life total to not just lose immediately, it will eventually take over the game. So once Safira left, and I would estimate about three artifacts have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. Praetorian is very far away from a Safira actually closing it out through yeah. his combo style. And I think a lot of that is because he was not aggressive enough in uh, playing his Deus Ex, playing out the Acceleradiums, and then generating artifacts. Yep. Very similar to a spell boost uh, deck that is provided in Runecraft. The later the play points go, actually, the faster you chew through your artifacts, right? Because you have so many, so much flexibility and play points. To well, you got to think of the choice, right? He he decided to save himself four damage to basically never get his combo online, mm -hmm. and now we're getting to the point in the game where he might not ever be able to get there, and now he's going to be taking even more than four damage if yeah. he wants to stop to play his combo. And uh, we see now no way to tutor an artifact. No ar artifacts in hand. Deus Ex still not played, so he can't shuffle his hand. Well, he can play Deus Ex and the Mystic Artifact. is probably the safest play. I mean, not the Mystic Artifact, uh, but the, the Iron uh, Staff, the iron staff yeah. Yeah, mechanic. So he can do that and activate. It's dicey, though, because, of course, we know there's a million cards in Meow's hand. Mm -hmm. and uh, to just blow through the ward. Just blow through it with mutagenic bolts. Yeah, but he's got to do it. Yeah. He's, 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 he's taking too long to get this active. Figuring he's pulling the trigger now. Yeah, the uh, the oinky oinky, the happy pig will actually get mutagenic bolted out, and there's a shuffle. I mean, yeah, this is just a lethal setup here. Yep, yep. You just piercing rune, then you mutagenic bolt or halo golem. Yep, halo golem, piercing rune. There it is. I I really think this is a you you have to go fast. Right? You have With to go much craft. faster, and you all you immediately have to make the decision to cut your losses. Right. I would say that. Skipping the the on curve Deus X for double acceleradium is fine. I would say anything past that is not so fine. Not so fine. And honestly speaking, Burn Runecraft is one of its tougher matchups because yes. honestly, it just keeps doing consistent damage over time. Like if you're talking about Portal Craft, if you're playing it to its fullest extent, you might be playing until turn 12, yeah. 13, 14, and a Burn lot just of has so many time t turns to draw the Burn yeah. cards to finish. And a you lot up. of your artifacts are three defense or lower. Yeah. You know, really the only one that you're looking at that's not is the Radiance, right? Yeah. Which are an aggressive game plan, but the way Praetorian's deck is set up, it's not about the Radiant Artifacts. Mm -hmm. You know, he's really just looking to draw Ward Artifacts and draw Artifacts, right? They're kind of just like the, the extra cherry on top if you need them every once in a while. That's like the Biofab. Like, you have, there are there is a follower in Praetorian's deck that will put yeah. basically a, a random copy of two different yes. Artifacts. So, so you could get the you Radiant. You can get Radiance in your which deck. Which is a Storm 5-4 five, four, for 5. 4-3. Four, four, Storm four, four three when it when it dies. Oh, sorry, yeah, four three. You draw yes. a card. Yeah, four three uh, for five play points. For five play points. Uh huh. And you can biofab it. <laughs> and you can biofab it, which is really good. That's yeah. that's again why the biofab is in yeah. the deck because it gives you some choices in how you build your deck once you start shuffling through it all. So this seems like a much more balanced hand to mm -hmm. open up with. Really good substitution will get rid of that happy pig, very nicely. Not that it super matters because he's at max health, but it's just nice to be able to remove and swing face if that's the option that you want to go with. Yep. And removing artifacts at this point isn't that big of a deal because you already have the deuce sex in hand, so mm -hmm. you actually want to keep artifacts in your yeah. deck. You want to kind of shuffle into it alongside Acceleradiums. So I think Iron Staff can work because you still aren't at risk of losing a follower to this. Perhaps maybe the Elf Twin Assault might make you feel a little bit sad about that, but I think that's fine to get that option out of hand. Yeah, nothing you can really do about Alt Twins Assault. I mean, that is that is the major pull besides beating the Beast to play this this version of the deck. The card is really good. It does something that not even evolved cards can do a lot of the time. You know what I mean? Just take out two followers. You don't really lose anything. It's it's good stuff. Only costs two play points. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen this matchup against uh, beating the Beast. I do think that. If you are on the play, you are a little better set up because your Deus Ex can be swung into by the Beauty and the Beast, and then you on turn seven you can do some kind of artifact play to fight back against I it. I feel like the slower the neutral forest deck is, the better it is for Portal Craft. Mm. Because honestly speaking, because these Forest Craft decks don't have like, you know, Queen of the Dread Sea tilting at windmills and ways to just mm. end the game, they just have to play a Bahamut or a yeah. something. 
and then Portal Craft, once it t gets going, can just take out yeah. any any follower whatsoever yeah. on any given turn. It has a lot of reach, even when it doesn't have evolution orbs remaining. Yep. And I hope we get to the point where we can show you what we mean. Yeah. Because right now it's kind of abstract. It's like, what do you mean you can just deal with everything? Yeah. It's like, if your entire deck is filled with artifacts and they all have rush, mm -hmm. and they just you get two damage, yeah, three damage, yeah. two damage, three damage. It, they, you just plow through things. You draw a bunch of cards. You reset your hand. You fill up the board. Yeah. And every artifact you throw. And there's even times where you can do scenarios where you start out with playing. Uh, certain cards that generate artifacts and then you draw into more artifacts and you come back to 10 play points and start out with a Saphira that does 8 damage and end the turn with a Saphira that does 14. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. A Praetorian, like, drawing, when you draw Deuce X in your hand, you're just like, alright, this game, I like this game. So I don't particularly, I guess there's not a lot else to play. But I would definitely have done something like play the Iron Staff and then either save the Evolve or Evolve the Deus Ex. Uh, I really don't like the play of the artifact there. This could shut Resonance off for the Deus Ex turn. Mm -hmm. So on the flip, he's going to draw a card which is going to activate Resonance. If Meow runs into the Analyzing Artifact, it draws a second card which will then deactivate Resonance. Mm-hmm. Which means that Deuce X on six isn't real, and if and if we saw it last time, if it just goes too there slow, it it's not yep. going to be able to to pick up enough steam fast enough. This this actually kind of worked out okay because now you can Deus X safely, and then Acceleradium, and then just figure figure out your turns from there. Yep. You, you don't even careful. have to spend the Evolution Orb here, which is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely good. Yeah. This this is looking good for Praetorian. Looking at Meow's next few turns, being on the draw, I think, is kind of hurting him. There's not a lot of pressure that he's putting out here in terms of followers on board. Yep. And there's not really great options didn't, to, like... Didn't find the Beauty and the Beast for his turn six yet. Yeah. Not a bad option. And Deus Ex is a pretty beefy card on yeah, its own. Yeah, it is. Six play point four five, Just good stats. Mm -hmm. Not great. Good. Yeah. It avoids things like the three damage ping from Hector here. Mm-hmm is very nice. Now Hector's probably still going to get played and evolved over the Deuce Ex. Yep. And this is going to give opportunity for this uh, Acceleradium to come down and you can play things like your Mystic Artifact. And this is where controlling Resonance becomes very important, right? He has meta production, with, which helps. Mm -hmm. But, for example, he'll play, his, he'll play his Acceleradium. If you play the Mystic Artifact, you turn off Resonance, so you must play the meta production to turn it back on if you want to shuffle hand. Yep. And that's probably what he's going to do just to get more artifacts into his deck. Oh, play the Spinaria. Look at those play points go back up. Play the Spinaria. Yeah, you can play the Spinaria into the meta yep. production. You can throw the Spinaria's artifact in as well, which will shuffle your hand. The power of machinery. Okay, looks like he just wants to put more artifacts in the deck. No problem mm -hmm. with that. Oh, he's going to shuffle. Yeah, play that puppet. No, nah, come on, man. <laughs> you always got to bait the puppet. Yeah. Hamlin is actually also very good in certain situations. You can use it to copy an artifact mm -hmm. to get yourself two instances of three damage rush, for example. Yep. You yeah. can also you can also copy a generator if you're feeling like mm -hmm. your deck size is running a little too low. Just throw some artifacts back in the deck. And remember, currently any artifact that is played is gaining Praetorian two play points mm -hmm. because he has the Deus Ex effect that is invisible right now. Every artifact played from Deus Ex has that innate one play point generation. Yep. And the Acceleradium in play. And uh, Meow, not too far off, did find Beauty of the Beast for mm -hmm. turn seven. This is this is tough, but it's good. Like, Icarus Evolve is very good for this scenario because mm -hmm. you guarantee that pool on an artifact. And if you need, you can Icarus Evolve, Hamlin the artifact, so you have two instances of that artifact to play out. And you're very likely going to get the Ancient Artifact. Yeah. Yep, there it is. Yep, Ancient Artifact into Ancient Artifact into just the 2-3 yeah. swinging in. You, can, or the you can preserve your... Uh, well, can you? You can Hamlin, and then... You, I guess you would need board space. Play one, swing it in. These are the crazy turns, yeah. by the way. These are look when you look at his play points. It's just yeah. going back up, right? I thought you couldn't play anything else this turn. No, I can, I can play as much as I want, my friend. Yeah. have to think hard about this turn. 
So this is now board space. This is a board space problem now. He's going to throw away his ward, keep the stats on board. Yep, and then Biofab, the one cool benefit of that is it's a zero cost card. Actually, he doesn't have that. Those are dimension cuts in hand. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Biofab is another cool card because even if you do run out of play points in a turn, it costs zero. You can actually affect your deck with yeah. how Resonance is because it adds two to your deck. Mm -hmm. Or, I'm sorry, it adds three to your deck. So you get to basically turn it on or off for free. Nice. The Isophil is going to take everything out and do another two points of damage to Praetorian. And remember, these, the health point on the Portacraft player is so valuable. All this little chip means a lot, especially when you have Zeus at the end of the at the end of the road. And it's a big deal that Praetorian did not oh, yes. shuffle his hand last turn. Because yep. this hand is not great. Play the other Acceleradium. Absolutely. I would just play the Analyte, the Ancient Artifact. And this shuffle your hand, you don't feel bad about that at all. Yeah, play the Deuce X too, just because the likelihood body. at this point to pull into a Saphir is very, very huge. Which gives you the information you need. Oh, he doesn't get it. You do need to keep track of how many artifacts you've run through because that's going to tell you how quick the pace of your game is. Mm -hmm. Do you need to biofab things? Do you need to start, you know, playing more artifact generators? And he has plenty of ways to turn on and off resonance next turn, so the the chain will continue. Oh, that was so big. And this really is getting dangerous for for Praetorian. Meow has a lot of heavy hitting cards. He does. And the Beauty and the Beast, Isophil, Beauty and the Beast, Zeus, Bahamut, and an Evolution Orb on standby. So you need to think about Resonance again on this turn. Biofab is going to activate. You're going to... You're going to... Okay, this activated. The Analyzing will deactivate and activate if you swing it into each of these cards. Yes, and that's perfectly fine. And you yep. can Icarus this turn as well. Yep. Depending on what else well, The you question draw. is, if you wanted to Biofab some more, you can just... Biofab substitute. I don't think you want to biofab the. I mean, in this matchup, maybe you do. You want yeah. the ancient artifact. You just do so you want can have options. So many. Yeah, you do want options to make sure you can luck or draw into Deus Ex into the damage you need to right. take care of a Bahamut. Unfortunately, if he plays it this turn, it'll turn resonance off. So, yeah. can't do it this turn. We'll redraw, though. Nice. There's, There's a, a Saphira. Saphira. The question is, how much damage does that Saphira have? I think we got to click on it to figure it out. Yeah. But it's all right. We'll figure it out when he plays it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll either end the game or it won't, right? Nice. Yowch, and it does not destroy fun. the Acceleradium anymore. Yep. So Acceleradium's still getting full value here. So this is tough. There's nothing to tutor out. You can play the Saphira for extra damage if you feel like you need it. And remember, you're profiting play points here. Mm -hmm. Yep, this turns off resonance. That turns it back on. That turns it off. <laughs> so you need to be careful. If you play your analyzing, you can't play your meta production if you want to shuffle. But you might want to keep because the Saphir exists here. The funny thing is, is that before, Bahamut was super hard to take out Yeah. as the Portal Cup player. Now, now not it's so much. much. Easier. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. He just pulled into another Mystic. Look at these turns! And they can play the Saphira if he wants to. And then redraw a hand. Yeah. How big is this one? I would say seven. Eight. Twelve! Twelve. Oh my god! Boom! And the shuffle is going to pull another one. There Guaranteed. it is. Guaranteed. Guaranteed pull another there one. There it is. What a turn. Oh my god. What a turn. Oh my god. All right, heal four. But you already that's know that that's yeah. 12. Yeah, this, this was, I think. You had to Zeus, right? Yeah, you have to Zeus, but even Zeus might not be big enough, right? I mean, you can technically get you to can, a point where you just wipe it all out. Yeah, and do the same you thing can again. play Mystic, Radiant. Actually, your Acceleradium is disappearing, so actually, probably the Zeus would have worked. But the game ends here. Praetorian takes the win off the Portalcraft deck. The power of back Portalcraft. to back twelve damage Sephiras. That's pretty insane. Meow. All he can do is smile. Yeah. Knows. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what why this is why we were so sad when we couldn't see this deck, guys. Yeah. Now you understand. That's what's up. Yeah. That is dope. I really like. Uh, I think the second game was much much better put together for yeah. Praetorian. Burn Rune is a tough matchup, as you mentioned, right? There's a lot of pressure coming at you, and a lot you of need pressure. to make that. It is like the whole question of playing to win in in 
for what Portal Craft has to deal with, right? Like, if you don't play your Deus Ex and you're just trying to survive, you're still not setting yourself up for a victory yeah. in the end. You know? I mean, the only way that you can really win with Portal Craft when you don't actually full combo off is if you can play a value mid-range game plan. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of decks where you can do that against, and a lot of decks you can't. You yeah. can't really do value mid-range against a deck that's just going to play Bahamas and Nisrefills mm -hmm. against you all day, so you do need a combo. All right. Now, Praetorium, Praetorium has this burn rune deck that has a lot of cards that kind of replenish itself, mm -hmm. right? More of a card draw-esque version of the burn rune craft deck. Uh, of course, with Goblin Mage, is not a card we see often in the deck. Mm -hmm. And a very could just go wrong from Yao. You can see him shaking his head already. Mm -hmm. Don't like to see this hand. Got an Elf Twins Assault. Okay, there's something. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Not happy about it, though. I wouldn't be happy with that hand. Mm. Now, what's interesting is I, I actually think in this scenario an Elf Twin Assault can, can blow past it, too. You know, Mage of Nightfall, like, what is the greatest source of damage within these early turns? Mm -hmm. It is that Mage of Nightfall, right? Right, and we don't even know if Praetorian's playing Mage of Nightfall. Mm -hmm. Like, these cards are great, but they're kind of fodder for the Elf Twin. And then you got the Impartial Strix coming up. Mm -hmm. I think against Neutral Force, against Meow's List, I probably would go with the Magic Illusionist here just because it is harder to kill, and it plays around Elf Twin's Assault a little bit, but it looks like he's going with the Mage instead. This is fine, too, because this will set up for a great turn 4 play. Mm -hmm. This actually might be the perfect setup for a big Impartial Strix punish. Mm -hmm. If there's any turn that that happens. Like an Impartial Strix, in, if you pre-evolve it, like the fact that your opponent is on the play might actually really hurt him. Yeah, because like, how do you actually deal with it? Yeah. It's true. We'll see if he goes that route. I doubt he'll pre-evo it. A 5-5 five five yeah. is still big enough. I would just leave it. Ooh. Yeah, especially with the Beauty and the Beast coming up later. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, well, he's going to go for board. Take out the Alchemist before it can evolve to draw a card, which is always good. Yeah, and now it's going to be a lot of resources. Can he, he He doesn't even have anything that can really deal with this right now. He can evolve yeah, his, his... You can swing the Illusionist in yeah. and then evolve the Illusionist that comes up. Okay, there he goes. Now he found a Goblin Mage. He can use this turn to evolve if he'd like. Don't hold the yep. He can evolve this if he wants, or play the Goblin Mage and evolve that. Not done for. Okay. Figure out my tricks yet. Wanting to use both piercing runes this turn. I guess, wait a minute. Wait no. a minute. Yeah. He spends all his uh, runes, which is interesting to say the least. And, and it's not like you're stocking up your piercing runes for the beauty of the beast, right. right? Yeah, that's really, it's just odd to me. Like, why, why use your big chunk, like, attacks yeah. on not Beauty and the Beast? Perfect time to use the piercing runes, but it looks like he wants to save it. I mean, he could be saving up for a Hector play. That's not a bad answer to Hector. Is that the Bell Ringer Angel? That's, that's, that's Big Lady Bell Meow Ringer is, Angel. Oh, gosh. It's so hard. Praetorian is playing Portal Craft, but Meow has a Shining Bell Ringer Angel. Oh, my gosh. And Abomination, yeah. Like, it's, it's tough. It's tough to know who to vote for these days. Man, look at that. The Bell Ringer Angel is so cool. I'm a fan. Especially when she draws you two cards. Yeah. Meow yeah, is having fun. Yeah, he is. Look at him. Always a smile on his face. Always playing sweet decks. There's a third piercing <laughs> Well, this is definitely the turn to do it. Interesting. Okay. He gets the third piercing rune to be two cost. He has, what, six damage in piercing rune? piercing runes in his hand. Yeah, but next turn Beauty and the Beast is going to come down, and those are all just going to gum up his hand. Beauty and the Beast, if it comes down, Evolve takes out the 6 damage. 2, 4, 10. He's one off lethal. <laughs> well, he did draw the Aaron, so that's another play he could make this turn. That's right, yeah. He does have Saha Quill with Istrafil in hand. It's love. Yeah. This ends here. Oh, boy. This is actually so dangerous, like, if he just dumps all his piercing runes in and just goes face, then you're left at one health at any amount of burn. The odds pulls anything. Is that the play you go for, or do you just... I mean, what else have you been saving up for if not just yeah. go all in, right? It wasn't, it wasn't to kill the Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> so... 
I think you do. With the Oz in hand, I don't see why not. Maybe getting cards out of hand here. Oh, wow. He actually does go for the... He's going for the safe play. Yeah. Interesting. I think this plays right into the hands of Meow, though. Yeah. I mean, this just this just activates Israfil Sakwa. I have no idea why he's playing a slower game when he had when he had such an aggressive start. Here comes the Sahakwil, and the big part about this is only two piercing runes can go into the Sahakwil, which might be fine, you know, because on the next turn then you can play Oz, the one cost piercing rune, yeah. and maybe now, something. Now that I think it about out, it, triple piercing rune into Oz on the following turn, like yeah. how do you lose that game? Yeah. And another Oz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, 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 do, how do you lose that game? Yeah. I mean, he's still in pretty good position, but now it's just you a have turn later. six damage on this turn. Like, oh, come on. it's it's super dangerous. The the magic illusions persist. You have no more evolution orbs. Only your Aaron enhanced. Oh, okay, he's actually gonna play the Oz now. That seems really risky to me. Yeah, not sure why the Oz. Again, kind of giving away a lot of. Just good options that he's had access to. Because now you have a good target to evolve over. Yeah, and you could get rid of that third piercing rune that you've been saving up the entire time. And I think most definitely that's the choice here. Aaron down. Yep. Evolve, get rid of the spells, yeah, and I have the ward remaining. I think Praetorian had this game, and he just gave it away. Now, it's still not over, but I mean, like, he could have won this game already. Yeah, he's going to lose the grand summoning and the piercing rune, but he has a second Oz that he can play here. It's not going to pull any more piercing runes because that was the last one. Yep, can play the Silent Lab before this Oz. There it is. That's what he does. Uh, I guess the draw is pretty irrelevant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That worked out. Then he can play that before the Oz. Now, of course, this will shut off things like if he does have another Grand Summoning in his deck. Won't be able to really get any use out of it, but I don't think that matters at this moment. Oh, Meow is so worried. Meow is so worried. Oh! Oh my gosh! Okay, the chain lightning, but again, if that... There's a second air in here. Yeah. And the air in evolve. Again, get rid of the chain lightning. Mm -hmm. That's going to mean that the Master Mage is a big response. That might be over. Right, if the Master Mage comes in, does three, and then you swing for two and two, three, two, two, four, seven. No, it's not enough. It's not enough. Not enough. And you need to kill the ward, so destroy the ward. Not bad, but yeah, and you do okay, have the Carl. Okay, you have the Carl. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a little awkward because you don't outright just remove the Aaron. The the problem is is that Praetorian has given Meow enough time to start dropping things like Israfil. Mm. And, and Bahamut and Zeus and things like that. So he has a lot more options than he did had he just put him to one yeah. going into an Oz turn. This card draw might be big. Mm. Well, maybe the next turn card draw will be big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think this will just be met by a Bahamut after the Carl comes down. But then again, that would mean game over because yeah, the Halo Golem. Yeah, the Halo Golem is there. He needs to go for healing. Okay, so if he plays Israfel, he can't do anything. He can't, he can't do anything. I think it's just the checkmate. Yep. I think it is checkmate. Yep. So even There's no way to swing your happy pig either. Yeah. So Bahamut's the only option. Oh, no! And Halo Golem will still finish this one out and send Meow out. So even though Praetorian did not take advantage of the way he could have won, basically just kind of soared into victory because the neutral forest deck didn't really have any good answers to both heal and deal with the board on turn after turn. Aaron is good at healing and providing a ward, but it doesn't take down multiple targets. Right. right? And especially when you're drawing into dirt runes, right? And your magic illusion is just popping back up again and again and again, you know? It provides the flexibility to swing face again and again and again. Portal Craft is this much closer to taking down the tournament. Portal Craft is happening. Sad to see Meow get eliminated, mm -hmm. but Praetorian made it happen off a craft that nobody has really ventured out to nobody. try. Nobody! This is the